Hello. This is the lesson for uh, teaching you the IA criteria for physics uh, internal assessment reports. Now, in this video, I'm going to explain the IA criteria, uh, the marks per criteria, how the criteria are used to mark the IAs, uh, including in this the strands and the best fit model will be explained. And I will also show you the rubric and feedback form for physics. I will be reviewing two annotated IAs with explanation of how they are marked. Your task is going to be uh, marking three annotated IAs and uploading the marks on ManageBack by the end of next lesson. Uh, so you can do this uh, between the two lessons or during the lesson tomorrow or whenever our next lesson is. Um, but by the end of your next physics lesson, these three um, extra samples should be marked and the, the relevant sheet should be uploaded to manage back. Uh, the resources you have for this lesson uh, are two explained IA samples that I will be explaining in this uh, video. The physics rubric and feedback form for uh, corresponding to both. The three practice IA samples that you are going to be marking. A blank version of the rubric and feedback form and the document to record your marking and re-upload into the task which you will do by the end of next lesson. So here we go. The IA criteria are um, personal engagement out of two marks, exploration out of six, analysis out of six, evaluation out of six, and communication out of four. These are somewhat similar to the MYP if you are we're familiar with the MYP criteria. Um, so I'll be walking you through these, how to use these criteria, what we use um, as a checklist to make sure you're satisfying the requirements of the highest band, and um, how, how we do the marking. Hopefully, this exercise will allow you to be familiar with all the IA criteria and how they are used in the DP, uh, marking IAs, and what um, we are looking for uh, when looking at these uh, criteria and, and the strands and the best fit approach. So, the first criteria, personal engagement, um, is out of two marks, out of 24 total. So it is honestly the least significant in terms of your final grade. But usually a lot of students get caught in satisfying the personal engagement and they worry about this one more than others. Don't. This is two marks out of 24. Uh, Exploration, analysis, and evaluation are six marks each, which is 18 marks out of 24. Those are the ones you need to be worrying about, not personal engagement prioritizing. Um, however, personal engagement has two, uh, three strands. Um, sorry, two strands. Uh, you show evidence of your personal significance, interest, or curiosity. And you show initiative and on in design and, and uses and relevance of your investigation. I'll get back to this when I look at the, the samples that I will show you in a minute. Now let's look at exploration. This is the criteria B in MYP. The first strand, I will now go to this document. Sorry. That one. Um, this is the rubric and feedback form that I mentioned earlier. It has two pages. Um, on the first page, you have the whole criteria on together on one page, and then each criteria, personal engagement, um, detailed in terms of their aspects or strands. So these are the two strands of personal engagement. And the checklist here are the things that tell you how to satisfy the highest grade for the mark band in that uh, criteria. So if you look at exploration, it's your topic question. Is it clear? Is it is there is there is it is there a clear relationship between independent variable and dependent variable in your investigation? Um, the second strand is background information. This is where you explain the science and you demonstrate that you understand it. Methodology. This is where you list your variables, increments, uh, control variables. That table you would remember from MIP labs. And the diagram, the materials, and the procedure, and the potential the potential weaknesses, which is new from the MYP, different 
And also the last aspect is safety, ethical, and environmental concerns. So let's look at this example and see what that student has done. So this one, this file, you'll find it explain IA sample one. I suggest that you pause this video now and open that while I explained it so you can also have your own version. And also have this open, which is called explain IA sample one, IA physics rubric and feedback form, which is what I used to grade this. And I'm gonna to refer to this as I walk you through. So for exploration, there are four strands as I mentioned. The first one, the topic question. So when you read this, which please pause and read what the question, what the student has done, I'm not gonna read it for you. Um, this student has stated the research question and aim somewhat clearly, but uh, the, it's really weak when it comes to describing investigation between the relationship between the independent and dependent variable. And that's basically because this whole big paragraph was written for personal engagement. And then this little paragraph for background, even for MIP, this would be very, very, very insufficient. And if you've done MIP, you know what I mean. This is not even close to explaining the science, the theories that are related between the independent variable and dependent variable. Um, in, your, in the flow of your, of your report, you should have an introduction where you explain the scientific background with all the relevant theories, maybe make reference to similar pe people's similar work and give some um, diagrams, explain your work, and all that scientific explanation should be here, which should lead to your hypothesis which should lead you to your variables and then you suggest your prediction sorry your materials and procedure but this student also has a problem with the flow which affects the communication criteria so after the scientific um, background you should have your hypothesis which is based on what you have described scientifically and then a prediction okay but this is where the variables should come in and then you identify your materials and then procedure and then potential weaknesses and safety so going back to strand one this student was given a three on strand one the highlighted ones are those that i wanted to show you what is missing on this strand so there are two statements in the first strand um so i said that at three now let's look at the background information. Um, background information is really, really weak as I mentioned. So you can pause and look and compare with the work if you wish. All of these yellow highlighted statements are um, not satisfied. So this student was given a two out of six for this strand. That brings us to methodology. Now, materials. The student has listed some materials that obviously will have uncertainties which were not mentioned. So in DP, you have to mention that in materials. One meter stick, plus or minus what? What is the uncertainty on the equipment? Scale, stopwatch. These are the three things that would have measurements and you need to state what materials, what are the uncertainties of these materials. Scale, again, unclear. Scale for what? What scale? Are you use, are you, do you have a Newton scale which measures force? Do you have um, a scale that measures mass? What are you measuring? So state the units and the uncertainties when you list the materials. Procedure starts with a diagram, which is good. It's important to have a labeled clear diagram, but the procedure is very, very unclear. It should be a series of steps that lists only the relevant steps and not the not stating the obvious. For example, gather the materials as a first step is truly unnecessary. So it has to be very clear in terms of, of the values you use and the number of increments. For example, this student said weight is not changed in the experiment. This is obviously something that's kept under control. Why is that not listed in the control variable table? And how is weight constant if size is changing? The students changing size but the the weight is kept constant so that's pretty unclear how that is even possible 
the method does not address how to control variables. So this is to say, whatever you list in your control variable table, these are not very comprehensive, but let's say you list the temperature of something uh, as, your, as a control variable. That must be mentioned in the procedure. You have to say, make sure you keep the temperature to this value so that the ex an experimenter which reads your procedure can duplicate exactly um, in the same steps that you have um, described. Now, going on with variables, independent variable. This is just a statement. What is the unit? What range? What increments? And justify the range. For example, the value of the surface area. Are you looking at a centimeter square between maybe 1 to 10 centimeter square? Or are you going to be using a meter squared and 5 meter square substances? Like what, what range? And why that range? You need to justify what range. This can boil down to uh, the availability of equipment or, or your ability to run trials or whatever. Anything relevant to that limits your increments. Again, for example, if you're measuring temperature, you will be limited to a um, lab thermometer, for example, which measures up to 100 degrees. So you're not going to be measuring 500 degrees with that. So limitation of equipment could be a justification of range that needs to be explained in the independent variable section. The dependent variable, you need to mention the units and the tools for whatever you're measuring. The control variables. Tools are not variables. A stopwatch is not a variable. Paper is not a variable. So you can say, what about the paper? Thickness, color, brand, what about the stopwatch? It's uncertainty, it's brand. What about it? Be specific. And the influence on results must clearly suggest how it's going to affect the dependent variable measurement. For example, this student has said, oh, the reaction times are fairly consistent. Or it's, they said, could influence the time. Like, influence how? If you change the thickness if you for example if thickness of paper was the variable i want to see a statement like if thickness of the paper is increased that increases the dependent variable or decreases the dependent variable you have to be very specific with an explanation of why that would be the case so this column is obviously very insufficient uh, a new uh, item to the uh, design in DP is uh, guessing some potential weaknesses. What do you foresee before? This is all before you do the experiment. So things that you foresee that this is going to affect the results and you're planning to take care of. And then this statement for safety is probably true, but not very convincing. I would want to see more detail. So. Before we go on to analysis, um, for methodology, the student was given a 2 because of all of these yellow things missing. And for aspect 4, safety, the student was given a 4. So that makes 2, 3, 3, 4. Overall, exploration grade was a 3 for the student. Um, going back to personal engagement, this, this student was given a 1. So we are at 1 and 3 so far. Now let's go to analysis. Analysis starts with the data collection. It's important that the a table is not overly repetitive. So if you have, like all of these are time, it's usually better to have a com combined row on the top that says time, the unit, and the uncertainty. Because otherwise you would have to repeat it. Like don't repeat the common things with every value. If they are common, like units and labels and uncertainties, have them on the top row. Only have them by each number, only if they are changing for each value. The decimal places for an uncertainty must be consistent for all of the values that are on that column, which this student did not do too well because this is a plus or minus 2, which point 0.2, which is one decimal place. And then how can you measure 
0.95 if your equipment has a 0.2 uncertainty. Either this had to be 0.20 or this had to be 0.9 or 1.0. This would be 0.9, etc. Which is my comment right here. Um, under the data table, you must have a statement that explains how you came up with these uncertainties, which the student did. So they were obtained by looking at the minimum value that can be displayed. Any reasonable uh, explanation of how you come up with uncertainties is acceptable, but it has to be mentioned under the raw data table. Now, um, strand one, um, only one of these is highlighted. Um, for strand one, the student was given a four for this report. Strand two, data processing. Um, this includes calculations, giving worked example, the mathematics are correct, the formulas are shown, gradients are shown, process data has the same significant figures consistent with the draw data, and it's suitable for gra graphical presentations. Uh, these three items were highlighted for data processing for the student, and the paper was given a three for this strand. Let's see why. There's the formula given for calculating average, but not with values. Yes, show the formula, but also pick one line, one row, and show which, which numbers and lead to which answer. So in your process data table, after the calculation, I would want to see where each number comes from. So I would want to see if any of these numbers are a result of any calculation. I would look for a calculation above it that ends up with that number. So I know where each number comes from. Uh, the student made a mistake in calculating the uncertainty. When multiplying, you must add percentage and not absolute. So that was an obvious mistake in the processing of uncertainties. And then a comment here uh, was, how did you calculate the slopes? You, if you use the template, you have to cite it. Uh, you're going to see that citation in the second example I'm going to show you. This affects the communication criteria. And another comment, there is no final statement. Although the student said no final value, that doesn't justify not presenting anything, then why did you do the maximum mean slopes and why did you calculate them? If it's just for the sake of calculation, then it's worthless. Also, there is a little problem here with the title. The student forget to fix this title. <clears throat> just remember, if you're label says velocity versus surface area that means velocity should be on the y and the surface area should be on the x which is okay for the student and the units must be on the table on the labels which is correct um, that ends the analysis so how was this graded uh, aspect three was given a three aspect four was given a four so overall for analysis this paper was awarded a three for analysis criteria. That brings to the evaluation. So read this before you listen to my comments. Read all of this. Uh, my comments are, um, you see which items were highlighted um, because of these mistakes or missing items. For aspect one, um, this paper was given a three. Aspect two, scientific context was not discussed at all in the evaluation, in the conclusion. So that was given a one. Um, strengths were not discussed at all, which is why this is highlighted. And none of these were discussed. Uh, systematic error, there's a mistake um, that it mentioned, but what are they? The student hasn't said, what are they? It's very, very superficial. It's very vague. It's too generic and repetitive. The student could overwhelmingly said more sophisticated apparatus for a, almost every item that they discuss. So you can't use the same suggestion of improvement for every everything you have you have listed. Um, so for aspect three, the student was given a two, and aspect four, there are no scientific extensions. What can be done? What further experimentation can be done? Um, that's missing. Uh, suggestions are not specific. 
and there is no quantitative improvement of, of, of the variables. So that aspect was also a 2. That means 3, 1, 2, 2 for evaluation for strands. Evaluation grade was a 2. Communication. Um, citations were there for the theory in the beginning, but not for the um, graphs. Uh, they were not cited. Um, if you use a diagram that you have not drawn, you must cite it. You, you know this, but for the record, I wanted to state that. Um, the flow, I've mentioned this before, the logical flow is not very well done. Um, not all background information is relevant to the research question, and there are some labeling errors and some terms that are not explained correctly. So out of four points for communication, three, four, and three were awarded, so an overall three out of four for the um, communication criteria which means this paper uh, received 12 out of 24 marks. Okay, let's look at a more different example, a very different example. This is the one that received 22 marks out of 24. So I wanted to show you one moderate example and one that actually satisfies most of the criteria. So I'll leave it to you to read all of this. Uh, but even now you can see I don't have too many annotations made. The range and increments missed for independent variable. Some comments on the control variable table. Um, minor points that I've made on the analysis. And same for the evaluation and look at the number of sources. So the form that I sh prepared for this one um, look at the number of yellow highlights. For this paper, uh, the student was awarded a 2 for personal engagement, um, 6 for exploration. Like even having just one may not mean you are going to definitely lose a mark on each strand. Uh, the student satisfied the, the requirements for exploration with minor errors but still got a 6. For analysis, the student got a 5, and for evaluation, the student got a 5, and everything was in place for the format and the presentation, so the student got a 4. Now, what you have to do, make sure you read both of these lab reports. You compare them with their corresponding feedback forms. Um, use this feedback form while you um, practice the, the marking, the three marking samples that you have to do by the end of next lesson. Um, as you do that, you will have read all of these items and please reach out to us when you have doubts or questions about any of these. Once you finish marking all the uh, three, you're going to find this IA Marking Practice Excel sheet attached to the same uh, task. So these are the first two. These are the maximum marks for each criteria. Um, this is the first one I, sh I showed you, and this is the second one that we looked at. And then now it's your job to fill out the rest. Um, it's OK that you're not exactly giving the grades that these students got from us. Obviously, that's OK, but it is very important that you do this practice. And these three are not very low, I will tell you, but they're not very, very high either. So there's a range of grades that they got for each criteria. The whole point is not to see a perfect sample. The whole point is, one, to see variety, and two, to practice marking, which will make you read and understand and practice the IA criteria so when you do your own, you know what to watch for and what we are looking for. Okay, so now going back to the plan of this lesson, your task, you will find three annotated IAs for practice. Your job is to use the annotations. Even if you don't understand the physics, it's, it's completely irrelevant. You don't have to. Um, but the annotations should help you with marking those um, papers. 
when you do put them in the Excel sheet that I just showed you and upload back into the task that you will find on manage back on, on, on the date of your next lesson. And then uh, we will reveal the grades that we gave for those papers. And then we can run a question answer session. So I actually suggest that you do it before next lesson. And worst case scenario, do at least one or two so that you have time to ask questions during our time next lesson. I'm happy to answer questions if you have any about the marking or if, if you need clarification on the IA criteria. So uh, we'll see you later.